Hello my friends, welcome back. So, Lunasa, the festival of the god Lu, or Lugus, or Hugh, or whatever you want to call him. Uh, so this, my friends, is one of the uh, pagan pre-Christian feast days uh, associated with the um, uh, the Celtic worldview, but it's also one of the uh, one of the eight festival days or sabbats in the contemporary pagan wheel of the year. So I'm going to talk a bit about um, Lunasa uh, or Lamas, as it's known in the English speaking world, uh, and this celebration and feast day and what it kind of represents. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the god Lu as well, or Lugus. So if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I do talk a little bit about the Wheel of the Year in some of my other videos. If you're new to this channel and like this content on myth and folklore and symbolism and mythology and storytelling, then why not give me a uh, like and a subscribe? It'd mean a lot. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, Lunasa uh, is taking place today, or rather uh, this evening, on the uh, end of July into the evening of the 1st of August. Uh, in the Celtic world view, of course, the day lasts from sundown until sundown. So uh, Lunasa lasts for this day. Uh, but it also is a, a period of time in the harvest. So it's the first couple of months of August, usually first couple of weeks of August, and it is uh, the time when our agricultural ancestors would have been taking the very, very first harvest. So, if you look around, I live in an agricultural area here of southwest England. All of the fields that had uh, grain on have now been cut, or just about to be, or have previously been cut because it's been a bit rainy today. So, um, yeah, so that very first taking of grain. Uh, that is immediately or traditionally would have been made into a loaf of bread and in the Christian um, sort of uh, borrowing of this pre-Christian festival because the Christians did uh, quite a lot of that uh, in a way baking a pagan worldview into Christianity um, but that loaf of bread would be put in church or on an altar and choir boys would sing around it and angels would dance over it um, Traditionally though, and this is still done in many parts of the world, mainly in Ireland, as well as in contemporary pagan circles, wherever else in the world, the first bread is shaped into um, a loaf shaped like the god Lu. This is a remnant of a very, very, very ancient custom, which I suggest to you is a remnant of the sacrifice of the god king to the fertility of the land to ensure a good harvest. Practically speaking, though, it's a big excuse to have a party. Uh, and all across uh, Britain and Ireland, this weekend, the, the end of July, there's a lot of um, horse races, a lot of festivals. I've been at a music festival this weekend, so apologies if this talk is a bit rambly. Um, so, yeah, very much keeping that tradition alive. But traditionally, that first bread would be given to the workers to sustain them through that very important um, uh, period in their very beginning taking in of the harvest. Uh, and they would also drink lots of ale. Uh, important deals would be would be made. Uh, sometimes there'd be certain short-term marriages, uh, trading in horses and women and goods, uh, all sorts of things. So a true um, feast day, which also, of course, has religious and magical significance. Um, so in this part of the world, obviously in Northern Europe, it's less of an issue in Southern Europe, but blight is a big problem. It can blight uh, a, a crop fungus uh, infection. You can destroy a whole crop. That can ruin an entire village, you know, um, or, or an entire population, as we saw so horribly in the uh, potato famines of Ireland, which was caused, of course, by a potato blight, not a corn blight. Um, but one of the... Uh, one of the rituals that, that may have been done around uh, Lamas or Lunasa would have been the vanquishing of blight, usually represented by a demon. Uh, so we can see this in the folklore. This is a, a really, really, really old sort of Indo-European folkloric motif. We see it in Greek and Roman myth, we see it in Celtic myth, we see it in Norse myth, we see it in popular folklore from across Europe. Uh, but it's basically a um, usually male sort of um, skilled uh, light god 
vanquishing a kind of demon uh, that often represents a, a poor harvest or, um, or some sort of blight or famine or disease on the crop um, and vanquishing that so uh, those stories would have definitely been told as well as uh, offerings to uh, to whichever deity it may be in this case Lu or Lugus um, in some versions of this myth as well maybe uh, the demon might be hoarding loads of grain maybe underground and it has to be released up to the other other world um, there's Greek mirrorings of the corn goddess Ceres or Demeter uh, and Persephone being taken into the underworld by Pluto and then released, so sowing the cycles of the seasons. It's this seasonal mythology that is so common in all of our ancestors' mythos, whether it's um, Hellenic or Norse or Celtic or Germanic or whatever. Um, so a lot of that going on at this time of year. So Lunasa, um, the first day the, the very beginning of the harvest and in the Celtic worldview it's uh, the very first day of autumn as well which seems a bit strange because you know it's only the beginning of August it's high summer really but those days are getting shorter and we're heading towards Samhain now um, so of course a, a little bit about the wheel of the year I meant to say this earlier um, typically traditionally I say traditionally this is actually a fairly this is arguably quite a modern concept uh, from neo or contemporary paganism that the year is divided into eight. And it's kind of a combination of the quote unquote Germanic um, division of the year and feast days, which uh, some people say is mainly focused on the summer and winter solstice and the, uh, uh, and the equinoxes. So it's like that, it's like a cross. The Celtic system is like that. It's the cross quarter days. So, um, Imbola. I've made a video about Imbola. You're welcome to watch it if you want. Imbola, the uh, beginning of spring. Beltane, the beginning of summer. Lunasa, the beginning of autumn, harvest. And then, of course, Samhain or Halloween, which is the beginning of winter and the beginning of a new year, actually, in the Celtic worldview. Um, however, it's perfectly fair enough to merge these two because uh, as I've said before on this channel I think the division of sort of the European mythos into kind of Celtic, Hellenic, uh, Germanic is, is, is a bit arbitrary and if we look at the archaeological evidence of our ancestors predating Celts so in the Bronze Age, in the Neolithic when all these stone circles were going up all over the place it is clear from the alignment of those stones and what the stars and sun are doing in alignment with those stones that all eight of these days were um, honoured in some way, depending where you are in the Celtic world or, or what stone circle it is. So, so clearly there's an argument for all eight of these um, being venerated right into antiquity, as indeed would be obvious because uh, they are observable phenomena, you know, the winter and solar solstice are measurable by looking at the sky. Uh, in an agricultural society, the beginning of August is always when you're going to be bringing in the grain, right? Um, as indeed is happening in the fields all around me. A very old feast day in the Celtic and um, Germanic systems. La mass, we would normally say in English, means loaf mass in the old Anglo-Saxon. Um, Lunasa obviously it means Lu, Nasa either, either means um, sort of games or celebrations or gathering, uh, referring of course to the festival days uh, which, which still go on in time of year, especially in Ireland. You can see the continuance of a tradition going right back into prehistory, continuing all the way uh, to today, which is really, really exciting. Um, another possible interpretation of the, of the Nasa means it could be death, so the death of Lu. So again, this idea of a god or a god king being sacrificed to the land and of course when um when the reapers with their scythes and sickles are going out uh, into the um crop and harvesting it they are um slaying in contemporary paganism it's sometimes called the corn spirit uh, i suppose uh, uh corn god might be better um so lu in this sense is is another version of the resurrecting dying and resurrecting corn king which sort of ties him into jesus uh a little bit uh, in many 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 ways because of course christianity is of course the uh it's almost the evolution of pagan thought in many 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 ways if you look at the mythos of it it's just perfectly overlaid on the pagan imagination which is of course why it uh, flourished so readily in previously pagan societies like this one um 
so uh, that's a, a little bit about um, about uh, Lunasa. So if you're watching this video and it's and it's coming up to the first of August now, then uh, why not bake some bread? Why not bake some bread in the shape of a man or woman and then eat it like you would eat the flesh of Christ and be identified with him and come into eternal life? Why not uh, make an offering onto the soil uh, to promise a good harvest next year, maybe in your garden, maybe uh, put some of your uh, uh, your evening's wine or ale onto your vegetable bed as a little offering um, uh, to grow some nice vegetables next year. That's a kind of idea of something uh, magically inspired or pagan inspired that you could do if you want, uh, or just make some nice bread. Uh, drink some ale, light a fire or a candle tonight, dance around it, sing, have a good time. Uh, that is what Lunasa is all about. It's a feast day. Uh, now, Lou. Lou's an interesting character. He's very, very difficult to pin down. That's always the case with any uh, god form when we're trying to track a deity through time and space. Uh, they sometimes split into many local gods. Sometimes they might split into two. Sometimes aspects of one might transfer onto another. Uh, sometimes two gods might conjoin into one uh, or vice versa. It's a tricky, tricky, tricky business, especially as a lot of gods have dual or indeed triple natures anyway, like uh, Lou, like Lugo. So yeah, Lou, uh, we know most about him from the Irish literary version. He was really bigged up in the medieval, ver in the medieval era in Ireland uh, by Christian writers, possibly because he does have a slight Christ-like energy to him. I often think there's a really interesting synchronicity between the name Lugus and Logos, or word. Um, so what's, what, what are some comparisons with Lugus? Um, the Romans, when we arrived, this is always very telling because they always, of course, interpret uh, Celtic or Gaulish or British or um, Germanic gods according to the Roman pantheon. So normally when they encountered Lugus, they identified him with either Apollo, that makes sense as Lou is the patron of the arts and poetry. Um, he's also usually a blondie, just like Apollo, uh, and he's straight and true and bright in some tellings. Uh, so that makes total sense for Apollo, the god of the sun, um, and why Lou is sometimes imagined as a solar deity, which makes total sense with this um, seasonal uh, crop. Uh, thing, this corn god story that is underlying a lot of these seasonal days. Um, the other god he's quite often associated with, and I think this makes more sense actually, is Mercury or Hermes, the magician of the gods. Uh, this makes sense because in a lot of stories, Lou or Lugus is a trickster. Um, he's a real tricksy guy. Uh, we see this a lot in one of the oldest tellings of Lou, which I've told on this channel, I'll put a link to it. It's uh, Lou defeating Balor. So Balor of the Evil Eye, um, he, he's very tricksy in his uh, defeat of Balor. He's actually Balor's grandson as well, um, but he defeats him with a slingshot like David and Goliath, although it's difficult to know whether this was a later Christian um, insertion uh, because of its similarity with the David and Goliath story. So uh, it's always very, very, we're on very, very tricky ground with a lot of the Irish material because uh, it was so beautifully woven uh, into new Christian narratives, the old mythos, a bit like Snorri Snorrison and the, and the um, Icelandic Norse stuff. Um, but yeah, Balor, uh, he is a, uh, a Balor of the evil eye. Uh, the evil eye is, of course, a um, pan-Indo-European concept. We see it a lot in Greece and Turkey. You can buy those little evil eye pendants. Uh, in popular Hinduism, people can just have the evil eye and can make um, people unwell uh, or uh, women miscarry. Um, and the evil eye traditionally could also cause blight in a crop. So Balor is the literal personification of um, crop failure. Uh, so why, uh, so Liu um, defeats Balor, uh, banishing the race of demons or titans, the Formorians they're called, from Ireland and um, placing the children of Danu, the Tuata de Danan, uh, in their rightful place as the kings of Ireland. Uh, so Lou is very much, you know, the, the, the golden boy of the uh, Irish pantheon in this telling. So God defeating demon, uh, good harvest. Um, so, uh, as the magician of the gods, Lou is uh, probably similar to, yeah, Mercury, like I said, or um, Woden. 
Odin, uh, which, is, which is an interesting association as well. We can see why Lou's often associated with snakes, like Mercury, uh, with uh, dogs and crows and ravens, just like Odin. Uh, he's also got a spear, almost identical uh, to Odin's spear. This is one of the uh, uh, weapons of the Tuata de Danon, right? Oh, Lou is shining on me right now. Um, so it, it's a spear which uh, never misses and even comes back into the hand of the um, thrower. So this is just like Odin's spear, also a bit like Thor's hammer in that it comes back. Um, so yeah, this is a, a very, very old Indo-European sort of magic item, this, I would say. But the spear carrier, um, that is Odin um, and Lou. Uh, also interesting parallels with the horned god here as well. Uh, often when we see representations of Lugus, which is an original Gaulish sort of proto-Celtic version of the Irish Lou, uh, sometimes he's got three faces. Um, and we also see that often with Serenonos, the horned god, uh, who's also associated with, with spears a lot of the time, and dogs and ravens and the underworld. Uh, possibly a triple aspect thing going on there. Um, he's a really complicated guy, Lou, and difficult to pin down, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, uh, so I think that's all I'm going to talk about today, but happy Lunasa, everyone. Again, that was a right old ramble, but uh, I just wanted to fire off a video tonight because I haven't made one for a while, and it is, of course, uh, Lunasa this evening. So all hail the great god Lou of the long arm of the many, many talents, uh, and have a great evening, guys. Uh, have a good uh, feast and celebration tonight if you are celebrating Lunasa or Lamas. See you later. Hoi! <coughs>